hello. Front porch show. We're set to go. The front porch show. Oh, hello. We're set to go on with the front porch show. It's Dynamo. The front porch show. Magnifico. The front porch show. Dynamo. Magnifico on with the front porch show. We'll share a lot. <laughs> Big smiles from me and you. Hello, hello, the front porch show. We're good to go. The front porch show. Hello, hello, good to go on with the front porch show. Here's Don Van Galen. Live from Kedzo Park by the seat of our pants productions is again proud to present the front porch show starring John Stevens. This is Don Van Dalen along with the piano man Frank St. Germain inviting you to join our guest, Amy Coverley, the cultural services manager for the town of St. Mary's, and Mayor Al Strathy, Whoa. MPP Matt Ray, Whoa. and MP John Nader, musical guest Daniel Kennedy. And our usual features, community calendar, and much, much more, all today on the Front Porch Show. Now we'll share a lot or two. Big smiles from me and you. Real loud now. Hello, hello. Front Porch Show. We're good to go. Front Porch Show. Hello, hello. We're good to go on with. I'd like you to meet Alfred, by the way. We always have a dog on the front porch. Hey, Alfred, how are you doing? This is Alfred. Okay. Uh, what's what's oh, wow. with you guys? What's, what's the story here? You're all wet. Well, John, you know, we're here at Cadzo Park. And, you know, as I always say, it doesn't rain on the front porch show. But if there was ever a day you'd want it to rain, here we are in 31 degrees, 100% humidity. We took a dash over to the... Pad over there, we did. and it felt great. So, if any of you people out in the audience, none of you guys on Facebook, because I'm sorry, unless you want to jump in the shower at home, right. you guys can go take a break. About 30 minutes in, we'll take a two-minute break. Or right. after the show, oh, maybe we have a big party, a splash party, a splash party that after the show. Great. Okay, I'm in. Okay, who else is in for the splash party? Hey, we're doing. I'll do it. Serious. All right. It is so humid here, folks. And if you're in another country, wow, we got a bit of a, a bit of a humidity wave here right now. Okay, well, what we're doing now, Frank? She's back. She's back. She's back. She's back. Lauren. Our community calendar, Lauren E. Lauren Fisher. You're over there. So back with the community calendar, um, speaking of splashing, tomorrow night is St. Mary's Community Night at the Super Splash located at the Quarry, and that is from 5 to 7.30. Tickets will be half price, so that's only $10. Walk-up sales do not apply, so, or sorry, walk-up sales do apply, so please don't buy your passes down or online. And the St. Mary's Museum will continue with Melodies in the Museum this Wednesday, August 10th, from 7 to 8 p.m., also located here at the Cadzo, community, or Cadzo Park. This week is featuring Finally Hip, so from jazz to indie folk, there will be something for everyone. Please bring a blanket or lawn chair, and this will continue each Wednesday throughout August, at admission by donation. Finally, if you haven't gotten a chance to yet, there is a new market called Country Roots Fresh Market, offering a variety of local fare and flowers at reasonable prices outside of Rannick. They are open Tuesdays to Sundays at 10 a.m., and they're open into varying times throughout the week, so go check it out. And that's all for your community calendar this week. Thank you. <laughs> I must say that it's it's great having Lauren back. It's just wonderful. It is. Yeah, it adds a bit of class to the show. We had Don doing it before. Okay, so let's go on. This is one of the many times we've had Amy Amy Cubberly on the show, and uh, 
adjust our microphone just a bit. Uh, it won't come closer. There we go. Okay. i got to move my chair up. Ah. Pardon me. Okay. There we go. Oh, nice and loud now. So this is Amy Coverley. You're, you're basically on here every, every year. I think I have been. Yeah. Yes. But you've got a new title. Right? I do. And, and what's your new title? Um, cultural Services Manager. Okay. Yep. And, well, first, let's welcome Amy back. <laughs> what is that? Um, so I'm still overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the St. Mary's Museum and Archive, so I'm still the curator archivist there. Um, and then I'm overseeing any other cultural projects in the community, so uh, any built heritage, uh, heritage permitting, things like that, as well as film and public art. What are some of the, you say film and public arts? Yes. What do you mean by film and public arts? Uh, filming. So like when Murdoch Mysteries oh. comes to town and they need permits to close roads and all of that fun stuff that okay. gets filtered through me. So it's yep. pretty serious stuff then. Sometimes. Yeah. Oh, stuff. Is, is Murdoch <laughs> coming back, by the way? As far as I know, not, okay, not in the immediate future. Okay, but you're working on that, future. correct? Yes. Good. And that's your job? Yes. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Uh, if anybody wants to do a film of the Front Porch Show, a, a documentary, okay. Okay. okay, think about it. Okay. Uh, okay, quickly, Melody's at Museum. How, what year are we into? About a six or seven? Oh, year? no, this is our, this would have been our 11th year if we hadn't had two canceled years for COVID. So oh, it's the ninth year. Tell yeah. me who's who's performing quickly. Um, so coming up this week, as Lauren mentioned, we have the Finally Hip, which is a tragically hip cover band. Um, next week, we have York Street Thought Process, and that is Jaron Camp and Rachel Frankreiter, which I think many will recognize from St. Mary's. And then the final week, we have Jazz Maddox, and they are a seven-piece jazz band. Wow. wow. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and... You, if you had the first one, and you had to have, you had to go indoors. Yes, so we got to test our Plan B in Town Hall for the first time ever, thanks to torrential downpour and tornado warnings that were active during the concert. So, um, yes, we have a Plan B secured. Um, we have been able to get churches in the past years, but we've run into some issues with accessibility, and we want everyone to be able to get into the concert, so we're using the Town Hall Auditorium this year. So if... The concert isn't on, and they notify you rather early uh, that there is a plan B, and that's going there. <laughs> you know what our plan B is? Well, I'm watching it coming in right now. My <laughs> plan B is to get off the stage by the time that yeah. hits. So. We don't have a plan B. Huh? <laughs> We've been blessed for six years. We've never been rained out. So there we go. Got to have faith. Okay, uh, other activities you're doing. You, you Tell us about the kayaking thing. Yeah, so we've been doing heritage kayak tours this summer. Um, so as long, I've been at the museum for 15 years, and we've been doing walking tours of various neighborhoods during that time. And then last year, the municipality introduced the Yak Shack program, which is the free kayak uh, booking program through the library. So we've partnered with the library, and I've been doing guided heritage kayak tours along the river. So we've done six so far. We don't have any more on the calendar, but um, we're still just taking names and numbers if people are interested, and we'll, we'll work to get more on the calendar. Fantastic. You see, our, our museum and you are more than just being there. You do stuff, neat stuff. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Okay. Uh, any thoughts about uh, the in fall and winter, what's happening quickly? Um, so coming up late August, um, August 22nd, we have Tracy May Chambers coming to the museum. She's a Métis installation artist who is touring across North America doing uh, fiber art installations. Um, so she will be here for the day, and she loves public interaction. So if you're able to drop in on Monday, August 22nd, she would love to chat with you, and then her installation will stay up for the... Uh, about three months. Mm -hmm. um, we're also bringing back our seminar series. So seminars have been put on hold for two years, and uh, the seminar committee just had their first meeting this past week, and so we will be bringing back seminars in September. So stay tuned for that. Fantastic. And, and future plans, you know, years down the road, any, any long-range planning? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to do any planning at this point in the <laughs> pandemic after pivoting so many times. Um, but, yeah, we're just learning to roll with it. Uh, our strategic plan was um, approved by council in 2019, so we're still just working on uh, working through all of those uh, initiatives that were part of that plan. Yeah, for everybody, it's been a difficult two years. Okay, well, Amy, always informative, always entertaining. Add a lot of class to the show. Love having you in here. See you next year, okay? All right, thanks, John. Thanks, Amy.
I have a pizza delivery for Gail McCauley. Gail? When you hung order a pizza? What? When, when hunger Gail. strikes you and you Gail. need to get your food fast, hot, Gail. let River Runners serve you today. Pizza Hut is just one of the restaurants we run for. Check our website and see a list of our partners. Place your order for delivery and let River Runners do the rest. We believe in local, community, and family. All, All right, right. Chris. Here comes Gail. Just running up. That's our crossing guard. Yeah, the world's friendliest That's crossing the most world-famous crossing guard in the world. All right. Oh. How could you not wait? <laughs> So we're going to have some interviews with uh, some uh, politicians. Now, don't get excited. <laughs> okay, we're going to try something a bit different on the Front Porch Show. Rather than interview our guests individually, we're going to talk about how they work together for the town of St. Mary's. These guys actually like each other, which is very <laughs> rare in politics. There are three different levels of government, and they get I know they're friends, so that's great. We'll be looking at three issues, though, tonight. Affordable housing, health care, and infrastructure. I'd like to welcome John Nader, our MP. <laughs> Matthew Ray, our newly elected MPP. And if you don't know Al Strafty, you live in Rannick or someplace else. I, don't, I think everybody knows everybody knows Al. So, how are you guys doing? Doing good, John. Doing great, yeah. Okay, fun, fantastic. Let's get right at it with affordable housing. We're going to take a break. We're going to do one topic, take a bit of a break, then do the next topic. So the first topic is affordable housing. And, and like many places in Canada, there, there are jobs in St. Mary's, but with many places, people, especially the younger people, just can't afford a house. And St. Mary's is pretty chronic in a way that you can sometimes, I think, buy houses cheaper in London than you can St. Mary's because it's such a beautiful community. And everybody wants to move here. So, uh, Al, what plans are being put in place to address this problem in St. Mary's? Well, it's a big problem, John. It's a problem all over, actually. I actually thought we were here to sing with Frank, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> bad, 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 <laughs> Leroy <laughs> Brown is his song. But uh, in all seriousness, the, uh, the, the it's, a, it's a very complex problem. It has to do with market supply. And in St. Mary's, we've done a number of initiatives that the province has, you know, has started that we can actually allow for some bonusing and some incentives to builders uh, through our community improvement plan. We've also tried to allow for greater supply. Uh, but there's a lot of things that I'm sure the other, the other gentleman here will talk about in terms of the labor force and supply and pricing that we really have to work on. We also started looking at uh, working with some partners like Habitat for Humanity, and we're looking at a number of programs to try and, and get a better, a more diverse supply, supply of housing for people because it's a problem for young people and retiring people as well. Do you see it? Do you see it? Uh a solution eventually, though, uh, that you're working on? Do you see some resolution to this? Well, if we squeeze some money out of the other two guys sitting next to me, actually. We <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're here for, because this is going to be a very selfish interview. We're, we're not going to talk about what happens in, in Mitchell or Listowell. We don't care about those places, or Stratford. We want to know what you're going to do for us. So, Matthew, provincially, what's going to happen? What, what is the, we all know, again, it's, it's an issue that's on everybody's mind, but what's what What's the provincial government doing for this? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, we have a, a housing affordability task force, and they said, uh, as everyone knows, we need to build 1.5 million homes across Ontario uh, to meet essentially the current demand there is. That is not increasing uh, immigration levels that are projected to increase as well. Uh, and as uh, Mayor Strathy mentioned, uh, it affects the labor market uh, as well. A lot of employers, every employer is looking for someone. The biggest thing they tell us uh, at the provincial level is we can't find somewhere to house these people affordably, and that's in St. Mary's and everywhere else uh, across Ontario. And so the province, uh, I have the great honour and benefit of representing uh, St. Mary's at Queen's Park, uh, and uh, Mayor Strathy outlined some of the great initiatives they're doing. So honestly, it's advocating for some of those uh, ideas uh, to my colleagues at Queen's Park, letting them know, hey, this is what we're doing, uh, uh, responsible development moving yeah. forward. So you're saying you're going to really, really pull for St. Mary's at Queen's Park? Oh, yeah, Park. of course. And we'll pull for some money, too. I just yeah, okay. don't know if it'll be the amount. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Okay, John, what about federally? Yeah. What do you, what, what's, in the, what's in the books there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean just touching brief, you know, housing, transportation, labor, all three go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other two. They're all, they're all important. You know, from the federal perspective, we have what's called the National Housing Strategy. And unfortunately, at the local level, a lot of these smaller rural communities, we've never qualified. You know, the money has been split 50-50 into large urban municipalities, and the other 50% is all large urban plus all the small guys. So you have the small rural municipalities competing against the Torontos, the Kitcheners, the Londons of the world, and we just sque get squeezed out. So one of the things we need to do is change that, have things look at, at a rural lens. And as I say that, it's starting to get darker, cooling down a bit. That's great. <laughs> I don't know if that's ominous about our, our, our prospects with, with housing. But, uh, you know, that, that's what we have to do. We have to look at things from a rural perspective where we may have a smaller number of units, but that's – Equally as important as, you know, 10 units, 15 units locally, it's just as important as 100 or 1,000 units in a Toronto, a Kitchener, or London. Is, is uh, allowing more immigrants in to be skilled trade, is that part of the plan for the Red government? I mean, absolutely. When you're talking about skilled trades, we're about a million people short in skilled trade. So that's across the board. Uh, we need more people entering the trades. And I know there's been a lot of work done, you know, by Matthew's uh, colleagues, Monty McNaught and from, from Lambton Kent Middlesex, in really getting people... Uh, especially, you know, young young people interested in the skilled trades yeah. who can go out there and, and be the electricians, the millwrights, the, the yeah. plumbers, all those people who need we need out there uh, to, to to build the houses and to uh, back to you, Matthew. Now, years ago they used to have shop classes and skilled trade classes in high school. Is it is the provincial government looking at bringing that kind of thing back? Yeah, so uh, we are looking at bringing or expanding that. So uh, I know uh, the local high schools here have great. Uh, high school major programs or Red Seal programs. Uh, so that's through the shop classes. They can essentially begin their apprenticeship, as the weather turns very ominous, the apprenticeship uh, going forward. Uh, and so uh, I'm also a parliamentary, sec a parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Education. Uh, and we're looking at expanding that. Uh, the buzzers are the starting buzzers to are circle above us. <laughs> They're after the politicians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it going. Oh, I'm getting attacked here. Okay, well, that's great. And so Al... Town's doing something, province is doing something, federal government's doing something. We look forward to seeing what they're going to do. We're going to go on to our next talk, but we're first going to uh, go to Don, who's going to do something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a draw to make. Uh, if you were on Facebook and you uh, heard the promotion for the show... You know that we're giving away some free Tupperware today, and Yay. that is courtesy of Jennifer Enos, independent Tupperware consultant. Excellent. Jennifer, thank you very much. And we have, everybody has tickets, so we're going to make a draw here. I have Vanna White helping me out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 0688-9046. Uh, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Make another draw. Take your choice there. The last three digits, zero, two, three. Oh, I was close. Oh. Right. It's your two, two. Oh. Oh, uh, one okay. More. Oh. One more. <laughs> zero, two, one. Zero, two, one. Oh. The, other, the other side of it. Oh. oh. Excellent. There we go. Our lucky Tupperware winners. Okay. <laughs> why, why do I think that this show, this show is going to make some highlight reel somewhere in the world? One, two. <laughs> Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain. Tell oh, no. The rain is coming. Well, okay, uh, quickly. I, this is great. Keep it going. Okay. Keep it going. Uh, let's go to health care. Okay. And that's going to be something really big in the next while. Our health. Our, our hospital is a source of pride in our community, and lately a lot of things have been closed on weekends and stuff like that. Cutting the right to the bone, uh, this health care is a provincial responsibility. Uh, I know the government is, has been getting a lot of flack for it. Okay, we want action. What's going to happen? That's a great question, uh, John. Uh, and as many people know, uh, unfortunately, St. Mary's ER is closed uh, a couple times over the summer. Uh, and so this has been an issue uh, well before the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic, with many things uh, in healthcare, exaggerated that issue. Uh, 
I know Seaforth and Clinton, uh, they had uh, unfortunately closures in 2018 19 uh, on some weekends due to uh, staff vacancies. And so, what we're doing right now as the rain starts to fall uh, is uh, Minister Jones is working with the College of Nurses and uh, uh, surgeons and the doctors uh, to uh, fast track internationally educated nurses. Okay, <laughs> we're going to do Plan B. And so everyone quickly took cover under the stage and we tried to continue the show as best we could. Unfortunately, Daniel Kennedy's musical number had to be cancelled because we had no power for the keyboard. We certainly lived up to our name by the seat of our pants productions. We're seeing about a 2.6 million person backlog in the immigration system. And so that, that concludes everything, but a lot of that is, you know, foreign trade, trained workers, whether it's nurses, whether it's personal support workers. What we need to do is cut that backlog. And yeah. Cut that backlog quick, because the quicker we can get them here, the quicker we can start to ease some of the staffing challenges that we see locally and, and across the country. And one of the issues is the nurses are that your, your wife is in medical too. They're, they're suffering burnout, correct, Al? It's amazing the amount of burnout, and, and that's one of the things the government really needs to look at, is, as well as pay. These people need to be, you know, properly compensated as well. These people are getting burned out, and people aren't going into the profession, and people that are, can get out are getting out because yeah. they've had enough. I read in the newspaper today, in fact, that, that down in Hamilton, they're giving the nurses down there who are working overtime twenty dollars extra an hour uh, to work overtime because, again, they're burned out. And then, you know, we've seen where they were. They've been through a tough couple of years. And uh, it's, it's been really difficult emotionally, uh, physically, and of course trying to put their own lives together with things like COVID. COVID's hit us all emotionally, and uh, all my notes are <laughs> wet. <laughs> so there we Let's go. go on to infrastructure. Infrastructure. Okay, what, is, what does that mean, Al, to you? Infrastructure is really important for the community because it's what you know keeps things running and efficiently and transportation and everything together. So infrastructure is something that we deal with on a regular basis. Um, you know, way back when, when you look at the sewer projects and so forth in St. Mary's in the early 70s, the other level of government helped us to develop that. And we're at the same place once again where we're starting to rebuild things after 50, 60 years and we're looking for help from the other levels of the government. Yeah. So... Who wants to jump in? How are you going to help them with that infrastructure? I'll go first, Matthew. But one of the things I've always said is that we need to let the municipalities have the lead on these things. So predictable, long-term funding, have it done on a formula base so that it's, the towns aren't wasting resources, human resources, doing all these applications, only to find a year and a half down the road that they haven't been successful. So do it by a formula base, send the money to the, the municipalities who already know what their priorities are, whether it's water or wastewater, whether it's roads or bridges, and let them go at it. Let them do the, the, the work of the end and provide that funding on a stable yearly basis. So you're going to work to get all that funding for it? I've been advocating for that since uh, since uh, 2015, and, uh, and I haven't been successful yet, uh, do, switching things to that idea, but I think that's where we need to go. Okay. Go to the formula base of the municipalities, get the money, and they can go, go go to work and, and okay. make it happen. Eventually, what's going to happen? Yeah, well, I definitely agree with John, uh, and obviously Mayor Strathy, about formula-based predictable funding, because we don't want it all to go to downtown Toronto and subways, uh, which are important, but obviously roads and bridges and sewers and St. Mary's are important. I know last year in the community infrastructure uh, funding, uh, all the municipalities, including St. Mary's, received double, and so I'd like to see that amount and increase uh, going forward uh, for that, and so advocating for that at the provincial level. You know, John, I just add one thing too. Municipalities, um, they get 12% of the tax revenue that come in all forms from the government, and we own approximately 60% of the infrastructure. So there's a huge gap in trying to rebuild and keep up with their infrastructure. Right. I mean, municipalities have that challenge that their funding from the tax base comes from property taxes, which is a challenging way. When everyone owns their home, you know where that money's uh, money coming money's coming from. It's a real challenge. Can respect. I put in uh, for the uh, front porch show art center, <laughs> so, so, we, so, so we don't have to get nice and close. <laughs> the dome roof, you know, they can close for the close right the they can close and open. Okay, uh, just a minute, ladies and gentlemen, just a minute. Hang on, Johnny. <laughs> I'm Frank St. Germain, the new politician in town. <laughs> and I'm running against Al Strathy. You're here. Oh, You're here. Yeah. Now, I'm a, that's, my, uh, that's my crowd here. They, they're going to be a little loud. Managers, right? I would say uh, to make every house uh, worthy of buying a house or something here, Mayor Strathy agrees that basically the prices are too low. Uh, I'm sorry, too high. <laughs> I want to make them too low. So, with the agreement of all these politicians, every house that's sold in St. Mary's is under $100,000. No money down, and just talk to me. 
because I buy furniture from Leon's and you don't have to pay nothing for a long time. <laughs> But so watch yourself out. So I just want to make it clear as the producer of this show that Frank is as good a politician as Al is a piano player. Great. I've been known to be tough. There you go. And, be, and uh, that's Rob Ebony. And because of the rain, but it's not raining now, we're all going to move out and sing Home St. Mary's a cappella. It, it is actually raining now still. What well, doesn't yeah. matter, John? Then we go, what are you going to do about Daniel? Daniel. Yeah, Daniel. We got Daniel, Daniel here. Daniel. Frank, is, is Daniel here? Right here. Where are you, Daniel? He's right here. Daniel. Well, we can lead us in song. Daniel. Daniel. Let's sing it together, Daniel. We're Daniel next week. So let's do like kumbaya. So John, John, well, just while we're waiting, I have something I want to interrupt you oh, that's for right. just Sorry a second. I'm going to hijack your attention for just a second. So, as some people may know. This year is Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. 70 years as Queen and Head of the Commonwealth. And to honor 70 years, I'm presenting 70 people across Perth Wellington with a Platinum yes. Jubilee pin. Recognizing people who do stuff in the community but don't always get recognized. And one person I want to recognize today is Don Pike. Don helps Woo! out every year <laughs> with the Canada Day Parade. He's wearing his Canada Day outfit today. And Don works very hard every year with the Canada Day Parade. Doesn't always get recognized for all he does. Come on, Don. Come on, Don. There you go. There's the man. Platinum Jubilee Pin. We just say thank you for all you do. Look at the pin. We're going to see your face. Beautiful, baby. Thank you. Okay. Uh, John, we got one more thing, John. Yeah, go ahead. You, you have someone who's going to do credits for us today, as we always do at the end of the show. This is Ainsley. Ainsley, all you have to do is look at this camera and drop one of these at a time off the front. Okay? Just like and that. Yeah. And somebody will okay. tell you when to do it. Okay? Yeah. Okay. But don't get them wet. <laughs> okay, Excuse Frank, me, Frank the politician has got to go. Frank, okay, Frank the musician has to lead everybody a cappella in Home St. Mary's. Here we go. All right. right. Joe Flint. All right. I was born in Ontario. Place to stand, a place to grow. From Pickle to Point P Lake. There's no place I'd rather be than my hometown. They, they call Stone Town. The prettiest town, town from miles around. around. Where little falls laugh and people share smiles. Treat you like family. Why? Home St. Mary's. St. Mary's home to me. Home St. Mary's. St. Mary's home to me. I can't count the times I've been afraid. How life is good when God was great. One I was here yeah. to this special place. Was. It's quite a mystery. Excellent. Where? Anyone That's can be a friend. Farmers <laughs> feel they never ran through it all. So some might attempt. What a sight to see. Make some noise. Home, oh, St. Mary's. St. Mary's home to me, oh, home, St. Mary's, St. Mary's home to me. I've oh. left behind me many miles, I know highways on dusty trails, times got tough, all else still, knew where I should be. Tell me, Joe. Back in my hometown, they call Stone Town, the prettiest town for miles around. Little folks laugh, people share smiles, treat you like family. Here we go. Home, oh, St. Mary's, St. Mary's home to me. Where's your enthusiasm? Home, oh, St. Mary's, St. Mary's home to me. Keep going. Home, oh, St. Mary's, St. Mary's home to me. Oh, home, oh, St. Mary's, St. Mary's home to me. One more. Home. Oh,
Yeah. 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 Yeah.